Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Roald Eisden, and I'm presenting work that I did with my collaborator, Professor Gerard van Heistien. Both of us are associated with the Center for Tech Technology at the Northwest University. The work I'm presenting today is an investigation we did into the use of ordinal logistic regression modeling to analyze self-reported usage of and attitudes towards two swear words, Fiex and Hallefiex, loosely translated as fiercely tempered woman. Selecting a statistical test um, can be a daunting task since there are so many different statistical tests with different requirements and assumptions and also interpretation uh, possibilities. This is even more so when you're looking at using multiple variables to predict an outcome variable. And for this reason, we're investigating the use of one of these types of mixed effect models, namely the cumulative odds ordinal logistic regression model. Our aims are to answer the four research questions that we've posited there um, to measure the usefulness of this type of statistical test to evaluate the production, perception, and attitude towards these swear words, specifically to find out if OLR is able to predict the usage and or attitude towards these swear words, which of the predictor variables have a significant effect on the usage and attitude, um, whether these two words, which are semantically related, uh, have similar or the same predictor variables when we consider the outcome uh, variables, um, and can the OL, uh, OLR test uh, outcomes provide practical advice for content creators? Um, I'm briefly going to discuss the data set that we used. Um, the data was collected as part of the What the Swear Word project, that looks to collect data through various polls and questionnaires um, to test different collection and interpretation methods. Volunteer respondents were recruited through opportunistic and snowball sampling, which means that the sample of uh, respondents is not necessarily representative of the general population, as can be seen through the education level, the age, and um, conservative, less conservative or more liberal, a group that actually participated uh, in the words that we are looking at today. As part of the registration process for this project, um, participants provide demographic information, age, gender, um, their physical length and location, etc., as well as religious, political, and worldviews, um, which are based on previous sociolinguist sociolinguistic studies uh, of swear words in different languages. Um, to see whether the same significance and predictable or prediction um, capability of these demographic um, parameters are useful in the South African context, specifically for Afrikaans. In our modeling, these demographic um, parameters will then be used as the predictive variables. And what they're going to try and predict are the self-reported usage and attitude, which are uh, ascertained through a series of eight questions. Um, each of these questions are done in a short poll um, individually, um, so it's not multiple words that are treated at the same time, um, mainly to prevent respondent fatigue, um, but as a result, not all words uh, are necessarily rated by all um, participants. In our case, for FIEX, there were 133 participants that uh, responded to the questionnaire, while for Halefiech they were only 90. The questions that are answered, um, which are stated there, um, are all rated on a nine-point Likert scale, where only the first and last extreme va values are um, provided to the user, and they can then select one of the values between one and nine on the Likert scale to indicate, for instance, how often they hear or read a word, how taboo they think the word is for other users, uh, or how prominent they find the word if they encounter it, either um, when they hear or read the word. Um, Ordinal logistic regression modeling is a parameter, parametric statistical test that to determine whether one or more predictive variables have a statistically significant effect on an outcome variable. So in our case, the demographic information are the predictive variables and the responses on the Likert scale are the outcome variables. There are four assumptions to consider when working with ordinal logistic regression and determining whether that is the appropriate statistical test. 
The first is that you have an ordinal outcome variable. In our case, the Likert scale is treated as an ordinal variable, and although there are still some um, discussions within the statistical community on whether these are true ordinal variables, um, it has been widely enough used for us to um, make that assumption and assume that the Likert scales are indeed ordinal. Secondly, the predictive variables need to be either continuous, categorical, or ordinal. Thirdly, there should be no multicollinearity between two continuous predictive variables. And then lastly, um, the predictor variables must have proportional odds. This means that each predictor variable must have an identical effect at each cumulative spot split in the outcome variable. So because you have nine categories on the Likert scale, the uh, predictor variable must have the same effect at all of the different uh, intervals. For the what the swear data, the first three assumptions are fairly easily met. Firstly, our Likert type data we're treating as an ordinal variable, which is relatively widely accepted. Uh, all the uh, predictor variables are categorical or ordinal, um, and I refer you to the paper for the exact uh, categories for each of the predictor variables. Um, and since we don't have any continuous predictor variables, the third assumption um, is met automatically. The fourth assumption is slightly more complex and requires a, a statistical test to determine the fourth uh, to determine whether the predictor variables adhere to the fourth assumption. The test that um, is provided is the assumption of proportional odds, which compares the fit of the proportional odds model to a cumulative odds model. If this assumption holds for that particular predictor variable, there shouldn't be a statistically significant difference between the cumulative odds model and the proportional odds model. If each of these um, odds models are tested on individual predictor variables, and if any of these predictor variables um, violate this particular assumption, they can, can't be used in that particular statistical test. Um, Ordinal logistic regression produces three high-level statistics to review. Firstly, there is the deviance goodness of fit, which indicates if the model is a good fit for the data. Secondly, there is the omnibus test, which indicates how well or statistically significant the um, model predicts the outcome variable over and above a intercept-only model, which is a model where none of the predictor variables are included and only the distributional um, the distribution of the outcome variable is taken into account. And lastly, there are the effects of each predictor variable. So where you have multiple, multiple predictor variables that contribute to the overall model, each of those also have a statistically significant um, indicator on how much they contribute to the model um, and whether their association with um, the particular outcome variable is statistically significant. In this table, we get an overview of the results that we found for the eight different outcome categories. Um, and I refer you again to the paper for more details on each of those, as well as the two words that we are considering. The first thing to consider in this table are the predictive variables that remain after testing for the assumption of proportional odds. As can be seen in some instances like Halefiech and the say right outcome variable, none of the predictor variables were actually um, satisfied the assumption of proportional odds, and therefore there is no model that is able to be created for Halefiech to make a prediction about the say right, um, how often people see or write the word Halefiech. On the right-hand side, we have the likelihood ratios, which um, indicate in the purple bands um, those uh, outcome variables for which a model could be created that had a statistically significant improvement over the intercept-only model. Uh, for an example, um, for FIEX and its Tabunus rating, the age, gender, length, location, and political views are the predictor variables that contribute to a model that has its fairly 
or a statistically significant um, overall model um, at a level of 0 0.006. For each of those uh, predictive variables, there are also their statistical significance. So for instance, the age variable um, is not directly statistically significant um, in its prediction of tabooness, but in, um, together with the other variables of which gender, for instance, is statistically significant, um, it contributes to the overall model. To show how these models express the individual parameter uh, effects, um, we have this visual representation of the odds ratios, which are the expression of the ordinal logistic regression models. Firstly, we can see that for the word FIAX and the outcome variable prominence, we do have a statistically significant effect at level 001. Um, and we have the individual categories that contribute to this particular model. So whether people are very religious, religious, moderately religious, not really religious, or not religious at all. The green bands indicate parameters which are not statistically significantly um, associated with the prominence of FIAX, while the religious category is um, used as the reference category, and the odds ratios express how much more, um, how many, how much more likely people are to assign either a higher or a lower value. So in this example, for instance, moderately religious people will assign a lower um, Likert scale rating to the word uh, for prominence of the word FIAX than religious people, while not statistically significantly, very religious people will assign a higher score. The median for the religious group will, in this case was six for prominence of FIAX. Similarly, not at all religious people will assign a lower score of a rate of four uh, to one, um, which indicates in general that less religious people find uh, FIAX less prominent than religious or very religious people. Now this is a relatively simple uh, model which only takes a single parameter uh, predictor variable while measuring tabooness requires five different variables in order to get a statistically significant um, OLR model. As we can see here the five variables that are considered are the location of the person, the political view, gender, the length, and age. And although, as mentioned earlier, age is not statistically significantly directly correlated with the tabooness of FIAX, in combination with gender, political views, and location, um, as well as length, um, it does generate a model which is an improvement over um, intercept only model. In this particular case, um, the interesting facts are that m men uh, are more 3.34 to 1 more likely to assign a lower um, Likert score than, than females. Um, and also note that for the very conservative group, um, the value of 17.86 to 1 is much higher um, than any of the other variables, but that should be considered with a little bit of um, skepticism since the sample size for that group is very small with only two people um, <clears throat> identifying as very conservative. Unfortunately, the, as we show here, not all of these um, models work, even if we keep all of the <clears throat> um, predictive variables that have proportional odds. And even though <clears throat> the <clears throat> perception of FIAX for the, how often um, respondents heard or read the word seems like it's relatively close to being statistically significant, um, adding or removing additional predictive variables does not actually improve the model. So only taking into consideration religious views, which looks like it has a statistically significant correlation with how often people hear or read the word, um, that doesn't actually hold if you only keep the religious views um, predictive variable. Um, 
given the fact that, for instance, political views does not have a statistically significant correlation um, as an overall model, we would also treat the um, statistically significance of conservative people assigning a lower Likert score value than liberal people in, this, in their perception of FIAX uh, with a little bit of skepticism. In conclusion, um, we were able to show that, um, well, we were able to identify dem demographic predictive variables that do have a statistical effect on outcome variables. And these indicate that, for instance, um, men are more likely to assign a, a higher or a lower bonus score uh, for the word FIAX than women would. And when used for writers, if they are going to use a particular word like FIAX, that they know who their target audience is, is going to be. The tests also provide a descriptive relationship to indicate how each individual demographic parameter affects the outcome, but it's not able to predict the outcome very accurately. It merely is an improvement over simpler statistical models or the intercept only model. Lastly, and also interestingly, there aren't any shared predictive variables between the two semantically related swear words, which means that it doesn't look at this stage whether there is a larger um, single model that would be able to make predictions about the usage and attitude towards these swear words in a more general sense. Thank you very much for your time, um, and if there are any questions, we will take those. Goodbye.